every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hear that? It's the sound of a mighty American Airlines flagship taking off. You know, being an American Airlines pilot is an exciting job. And now, thanks to Cheerios, you too can share in that fun. Because inside every specially marked package of Cheerios, you'll now find a free American Airlines air travel game. Yes, a free airplane game for you and your friends. Complete with instructions, four airplane playing pieces, a spinner, and two playing boards. You're the pilot in this exciting air travel game. And you play on a real American Airlines system map that adds to the fun. On the back, you'll find another paper game board with lots of important information every American Airlines pilot must know. So how about it? You be the pilot. Get your complete American Airlines air travel game today, free in Cheerios. Look for the special Cheerios package with a flying airplane on front. Supplies are limited, so hurry. Ask for Cheerios today, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hail Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were traveling northward through the valley of the Tongue River. When they drew rein at a spring to water their horses, the masked man said, Tonto, we're near the border of the Sioux Indian Treaty Land. Ah, only Sioux got right to be there. That's true. Under the treaty, even soldiers can enter their lands without inviting trouble. Better we stay out of that territory. Yes, so follow the river. Kimasabe, look ahead in valley. A rider headed this way. Ah, looks like young Indian. He's coming fast. Otto, that pony seems to be out of control. Oh, he's plenty wild Mustang. The Indian's tied to its back. It may roll on him. Or crush him against rock. We'll try to catch it. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. As the Lone Ranger and Toto urged their horses forward, the oncoming Mustang changed its course and headed toward boulders, against which to crush the helplessly tied rider. Come on, Silver. Racing to intercept the Mustang, the Lone Ranger and Toto loosened their lariat. The great horse Silver and Toto's paint horse scout seemed to know that a life depended on their speed. They closed in, one on each side of the Mustang, so their riders could throw the lariat. When the ropes dropped over the Mustang's neck, Scout and Silver braced and held them tight. The captured animal kicked, bucked, and squealed in fury. Easy, steady, big fella. I'll cut the boy loose. Hold steady, Silver. Dodging the Mustang's flailing hoof, the masked man slashed the rawhide thongs that bound the Indian to its back. As the boy leaped to safety, the Lone Ranger quickly cut the rope. The released Mustang raced away at top speed as the masked man turned to the young Indian. You, you had a narrow escape. Yes. I thank you for saving my life. But you, you were a mask. Please accept uh, us as friends. I do so. I, I ask no more questions. Uh, who are you? Dog Pine of the Ogallala Sioux. White men call me Joe. You speak English very well, Joe. Oh, how old are you? Seventeen. I returned to my people from a mission school last month. Who tied you to that Mustang? My people did it. It was their way of putting me to death. They knew the wild pony would soon kill me. You break tribal law? No. I tried to keep my people from attacking soldiers. Oh. Joe, you'd better tell Tonto me about this. Chief Grey Wolf and a white man named Zeke Humbert 
plan to attack army wagons that will travel tonight to reach Fort Franklin. Fort Franklin isn't far from here. Neither is the Indian village. When I heard of the plan, I tried to persuade my people not to take part in it. Gray Wolf became angry. Uh, him make trouble plenty time. He's a bad man. And Dick Humbert is worse. Humbert is the one who learned what the wagons carry. This is the first of the month. It's time for payroll money to go to the fort. The wagons carry money. Also rifles and ammunition. Isn't that what Gray Wolf wants? Yes. My people have no use for white man's money. But they want rifles. So that's it. Deke Humbert expects the Indians to massacre the soldiers and take the rifles and ammunition. After the fight, Humbert's men will ride in and get the money. They want the Indians to do the fighting and take the blame. The Indians will have reason to attack. Oh, why? The army wagons will be in the Indian treaty land. The soldiers know better than to trespass on that land. Soldiers are not familiar with this country. To them, it all looks alike. They must depend on their civilian scouts. Of course. The scouts for the army train are members of D. Compass gang. Joe, are you sure? I am sure. How do you know? I and all my people heard the talk when D. Humbert held council with Grey Wolf. So those scouts are going to lead the army wagons and guards into an ambush? Yes. I tried to leave the village to tell the colonel at Fort Franklin, but I was caught by Grey Wolf. Did he know your intention? He suspected I was trying to reach the fort. He called a council of the elders of the tribe. They sentenced me to be tied to the back of a wild pony. That nearly always means death. I would have been killed. But for you who saved me. Joe, you can never return to your people. No. I'm banished. There's no place for me to go. Yes, there is. Go to Fort Franklin. The army needs young men like you. Oh, it's too late. Too late? Even if I had a horse, I could not tell the soldiers about the plans in time to prevent the massacre. Kimasabi. Yes? Maybe we warn soldiers prevent massacre. I'd like to do more than that. What more could be? Steve Humbert has gotten away with many crooked schemes. I'd like to put him where he'll never again make trouble. Now I know you are my friend. I hope we meet again. So do I, Joe. I'll walk to the fort. Goodbye. Adios. Adios. Easy. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Come on, Scott. As Joe started toward the fort, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode rapidly in the opposite direction, hoping to fight the army wagon. Late that afternoon, Captain Jason Parker, the Army Paymaster, and the two treacherous civilian scouts halted their horses. Oh, 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 oh. They were about a half a mile ahead of the slow-moving army wagons and the escort of soldiers. The Paymaster frowned as he studied the landscape. Tim, are you sure we're on the right trail? I don't want to have any trouble with the Sioux by trespassing on the treaty land. I should say not. Don't you worry, Captain. Matt and I have been over oh, the there. wagons are coming. We'll uh, we'll make camp for the night. Camp? Here? Yes. It'll soon be dark, and I'd rather not approach any closer to the treaty lands in darkness. But I, uh, I thought we were going to keep going until we reached the fort. I'm changing the plan. We'll complete the trip tomorrow. But I don't it's think... It's my I... duty to deliver the wagons intact and to avoid trouble with Indians. Detachment! Oh! Oh. Circle the wagons and make pass! After dark, with the wagons drawn into a circle, the campfires burned low, and Captain Parker retired to his own wagon to sleep. The soldiers, all except the sentry, rolled into their blankets for the night. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, after making a wide sweep of the area near the treaty lands, 
right at the campfires of the soldiers and halted their horses. Out of those soldiers aren't on the treaty land. They're not far from us. That's right. If them travel more, then cross the boundary. Then Indians attack. They've been taken a long way off the Fort Franklin Trail. And that proves scouts crooked. Yeah, it's easy to be caught. Leave the horses here, Toto. Easy, Scotty. We go close, closer to camp. Yes, I'd like to talk to the officer in charge. Ah, maybe soldiers on guard. If so, we'll have to get past them. Keeping close to the ground and moving as silently as shadows, the Lone Ranger and Toto drew close to the circle of wagons and saw two men in civilian clothes talking to a uniformed guard. The masked man whispered, They must be the guides. That's right. Well, we're just going to stretch our legs, guard. We'll be back soon. Uh, we'll follow those men. Uh, The two civilian scouts walked across the rock-strewn ground until they considered it safe to talk without fear of being overheard. There, they sat down on one of the many boulders. Matt, I don't think the Indians will attack the outfit while it's here. Do you? No, I don't, Tim. They'll attack on the treaty lands, but nowhere else. Yeah, if that captain hadn't had such a fool notion of stopping for the night, we'd be on the treaty lands right now. Do you think the captain suspects anything? Ah. Uh, uh, he's just overcautious, that's all. We'll be breaking camp at daylight, then we'll guide the wagons where the Redskins will be waiting. The Redskins are probably waiting right now. So are Deke and his gang, but it can't be helped. You just have to wait. You know where Deke and the boys are waiting? Yeah, on the far side of the hill. They'll stay there until all the gunfire's over before they show up. Uh-huh. I hoped we'd be through with this job tonight. A few hours, more or less, won't make any difference. You I don't think... Hey, wait. Those two, masked. And a redskin. Keep your voices down, or you may never see daybreak. Now hold your fire. We don't hanker for trouble. Take their guns, Toto. Uh, let me get them. Uh, Mister, if we talk things over Which here... Which wagon is the commanding officer's? One this way. It's a little apart from the ones that are drawn into a circle. You see, we're willing to be friendly. Lie on the ground. Face down. Oh, but, Mister... Down. Down. All right, I'm, I'm doing it. Let us tell you about what we're... I know all about you, crooks. Your plans are known. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is a question, and here's one of the half that happy people have to say. That's the word up north. Just ask the champions. Up north, we know what Wheaties mean to guys like Slug and Harvey Keene. We love to see him belt that ball and make the fielders climb the wall. And Richie Ashburn, yes, indeed, he plays baseball at Wheaties' speed. Just watch him flash from base to base. This boy could win in any race. Yes, sir, Harvey Keene and Richie Ashburn are longtime Wheaties fans. Both of them know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. A few minutes later, when the scouts were effectively tied and gagged, the masked man and his Indian companion crept close to one of the guards, then suddenly seized him. Come here, you. He had no chance to make an outcry. He also was tied and gagged. Tuttle remained to watch him while the Lone Ranger went alone to the Commandant's wagon. He shook the officer gently. Wake up, Captain. Huh? What? Who? Steady. Don't be alarmed. I'm wearing a mask. A mask. Please keep your voice down and listen to me. People call me the Lone Ranger. I am. Am I awake or dreaming? You're awake, Captain. This is a joke or a trick. I came to warn you of a trick. One has been planned to massacre you and your men and steal your supplies. Why? I'll tell you all I know. Quickly and simply, the Lone Ranger reported what he had learned and told about the capture of the guard and the guide. And then the captain said, An incredible story. You say you're the Lone Ranger, but how do I know you're telling the truth? 
A letter in my pocket will be of interest to you. I'll have a match so you can read it. All right, here's the letter. The letter was signed in the familiar handwriting of a high army official whose judgment the captain could not question. The captain folded the letter slowly and returned it as he said, Sir, I'm indebted to you for the warning. I've nothing to say about the Indians as long as they remain on their own land. But those crooked civilian scouts, they should be shot. They're no worse than the other members of Humbert's gang. They should all be shot, including Humbert. No one has ever been able to prove anything against them, Captain. Even now, you can do nothing to them. But a plot like this... Humbert and his men won't even appear. Till after you and all your men are victims of an Indian massacre. Now, there must be some way to jail a pack of crooks like those. There is. How? Let their scheme proceed. But what do you mean? Humbert and his men are on the far side of the hill. They're out of sight, but near enough to hear gunfire. They're waiting for that gunfire. Yes. Yeah. With proper planning, I'm sure we could give them a hot reception. Deke Humbert had nearly 20 men in his gang on the far side of the hill. They had been waiting for hours, and midnight found them grumbling and restless. Mm. Deke, has anyone looked over the hill for the past hour? Yeah, I did, just a few minutes ago. Everything's still quiet for the soldiers are camp. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it, boys. We just have to wait. I'm tired of waiting. I told you, boys, the Army's not on tree land. Yeah, mighty close to it. I know that. They stopped there for the night. I thought the Indians might make their move, but they haven't done it. Now what will happen? Tim and Matt will see that the soldiers enter the treaty land. Don't worry. The Indians will attack tomorrow instead of tonight. What's the difference? There's nothing we can do in the meantime. Not a thing. We we'll just wait here until a gunfire starts. Then we know the Indians are attacking. We start out. The Indians will be through with that job by the time we get there. Yeah, this waiting gets on my nerves. And even have lights here in the camp. Turn in, get a good night's sleep. You might need it. What's that? Hey, a gunfire. Rifle. Army rifle. I hear Indian war cries. So do I. The Indians are attacking the soldiers. Good for Gray Wolf. I knew we could count on him. All right, get the horses. Deke, let's go to the hilltop and watch the fight. We'll do it as soon as we're ready to ride. See your guns, boys. Take plenty of ammunition. This is our night to get ready. Hey, hey. Spirits of the outlaws soared as they buckled on spare guns and tightened cinches ready for riding. Presently, all were ready. Hey, all set, boys? Yeah. All right, we'll go as far as the top of the hill, no farther. We wait right there till the Indians have moved away. That's right, Deacon. We take no chances of starting a fight with the Indians. Now, let's go! Hey. 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 The outlaws raced to the top of the hill where they drew rain. <laughs> When they looked down into the moonlit valley, they saw the wagons scattered. A couple of them turned on the side, and a scene that looked like a massacre. Yeah. Those redskins did their work fast. Must have caught the soldiers by complete surprise. Those soldiers didn't have a chance. I hope the redskins left the cash for us. I'm sure they did. Let's go get it. Get it back. Get it back. Get it back. Get it back. The army campfires had burned low, and darkness made it impossible for the outlaws to see details. But the wagons in disorder, the men lying on the ground, and the horses seemingly wandering at will, gave evidence of a quick and awful massacre. Here we are, boys. All set to take the cash. Yeah, there should be plenty of uh, push over, Huddy. I told you there'd be nothing to it. We better keep our guns handy in case one or two of the critters are still alive. Yeah, that's a good idea. Everyone just it? Yeah. yeah. All right, go through the wagon systematically. The first man to move will be shot. Hey. Who said that? I did. Uh, he's over there, behind that wagon. I'm back in this place from here. Hey, hey, what's this mean? They're all covered. They're not dead. They're all alive. Take them, boys. Help. All right, use your guns. Go. Use your guns. Men leaped to their feet on every side of Humber's outlaws, and those who wanted gunplay found angry soldiers glad to accommodate them. A number of crooks were wounded by the opening shots, 
others quickly realized that theirs was a hopeless situation. The Lone Ranger shouted, Put down your guns and raise your hands. What about you, Humbert? You, Mask, I'll kill you. Oh, yeah. oh, my arm. My arm is busted. You wanted more gunplay? And you got it, you scheming, murdering crook. We caught the pack of your red handed. Oh, my arm. We'll bandage it before we take you and your pal to the fort. You, you're that mask man. You schemed the whole thing. Uh -uh. It was a masked man's idea, Humber, to let you trap yourself. It was also his idea to hogtie those crooked guides. And they'll stay tied till we reach the fort. Oh, uh, Captain. Yes. <laughs> Have you any more good ideas? Oh, just one. When you reach the fort, you might thank a young Indian named Joe. Indeed I shall. He may be a soldier by the time you get there. If so, you'll be a good one. Otto, will you stay with the troopers and serve as guide for the rest of the trip to Fort Franklin? Uh, me do it. Oh, you leaving us? Yes, Captain. I'll ride ahead to the fort and report what happened here. Very well. The Commandant and the young Indian will be equally interested. Adios. Goodbye. Oh. And thanks for your help. Did you tell me to Oh, <laughs> Well, Humbert, aren't you wondering who the masked man is? I know who he is. But I didn't suspect he was in these parts. I didn't figure on fighting the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you.